What is going on, everybody? Justin Thomas here, Top Shelf Fandom. As always, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Today, we're going to be just kind of freestyling about what to expect out of the story as a whole. The story, of course, I'm speaking of is Viking Season 6, Part A, the mid-season finale here, Best Laid Plans. Is this episode going to carry out the best laid plans for the story in which Hearst is trying to tell. So before we go and start saying that this is what needs to happen and this is what I want to happen, and if this happens, it's going to be just the end of the series or any of that hyperbolic type of talk that I myself am guilty of, and I myself am guilty, maybe even the worst offender, of shitting on Hearst for how much Hearst says fuck history. I just, you know, I find that a little bit humorous. I think there are instances in which he is uh, closely already following the actual accounts, especially in England at the time. And, you know, he steers clear. There's just a few instances where it's like he's already on the historical timeline and it's like just continue down it because it's going where I felt the story was going anyway. So just don't skew it even more, but that's neither here nor there. When we we start to think about what's going to happen tonight, it's like, okay, so maybe we'll, we'll have Harold say King of Norway because we know that's what happens in history. Um, so we'll probably see that. So, but also, you know, Bjorn, we, we, we think he'll stick around. So maybe you'll be King of Sweden. First off, we have to think if they're going to introduce Sweden at this point, introducing Sweden would be like introducing the moon. Because again, Kattegat isn't even a real place. It's like a sliver of land, uh, potentially, between Jutland. It wasn't even a real trading post whatsoever. Um, There's no historical account of that. So, again, we are doing a rehash for a fight for a place that didn't exist. We have to remember, when thinking about, okay, is Bjorn going to become the king of Sweden like he does in the sagas? And there's some historical accounts that cite a king of Sweden, you know, named Bjorn. Um, Hearst, in all fairness, has never ever stated or ever sh- even showcased even a little bit that he is trying to do a direct adaption of the Norse sagas, uh, you know, on the screen, nor has he said he is trying to depict the historical accounts from the Saxons. You know, this, this has been quite clear thinking that they're going to send Ivar to Ireland or um, Bjorn to Sweden. We might want to really think that I don't think they've even said Sweden or Ireland. Like, I don't think those words have come out of anybody's mouth in this series. It would be literally, within the context of our story, introducing the fucking moon. So I, 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 we're not at that place. We're at the last act. And in, in 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 we are at the last beats of that act. Besides Iceland and Greenland, meaning re- essentially just Greenland, and potentially England, hopefully England, the conquest is done. And, and, and Greenland seems to be the only conquest uh, story thread that we will have remaining in this story england should be a thing i'm hoping it's going to be a thing and we should see something going on with alfred in the last season but again like we we can't be checking the box of history here or going to the historical counts nor nor the, nor the sagas because those don't those don't mesh those don't go together the and we are not going to see characters being dictated by history we are going to see characters being dictated by where they are as far as their internal development we're not externally motivated as much now in this series. That that is more in your first and second act. And we are at the point where, you know, characters like Bjorn, you know, I, he's gone. I think he's he just doesn't move our story anymore. And it's unfortunate because now we have to get to a point. I'm not, I, I am always uh, assessing story as first off what I think they're trying to do to the best of my knowledge, because that's the only fair thing to do for me to be like, okay, what is this story trying to do? And then I can judge it on that. Whether I enjoyed that or not is up to me. That's up. Everybody can feel how they feel about if you enjoyed it. It's entertainment. You can hate something that's like, you know, widely renowned and you can love something that's supposedly a huge, huge piece of garbage and one uh, Razzies and stuff like that. It doesn't, that's all up to you. But like, if you want to critique a story, you know, you have to critique it by what they're, setting out to do and if they achieved what they set out to do so you know and then whether or not you like that or not that's up to you so in my opinion what right now what i'm seeing is unfortunately a lot of stuff i hate and a lot of stuff i like and and what's coming to be very clear to me is that the characters that have places to go again those aren't external places they're internal are is ivar is vitschek and uba and he's essentially externally motivated at this time because he's really the only sound minded one in my opinion but bjorn we have to come to the conclusion that he is now in a position in which he has done a series of um you know noble acts that did not end well you know 
road to hell is paid by good intentions, blah, blah, blah. We have Kattegat, which is just in dire straits, uh, not just because of the Rus, the external force, but because, you know, Bjorn. Bjorn is a king that puts his people at risk. And, you know, Gunnheld's whole speech is a very telling moment of, the, you know, this is all sentiment. This is all, you know, the hearts, not minds. And, and Bjorn's doing the right thing. He's saying, you know, if you don't want me, because I'm, we're putting Kattegat at risk, you know, by me just being your king. It, it, in the whole motivation, they're swayed by sentiment. They're swayed by, look at all the things he's done. It's all this, you know... <laughs> Uh, you know some of it true whatever it is the warrior culture but it, in a sense it's like mm, you know that's he is not the, the right ruler for them you know is harold I, I don't know but the fact is you know unification would be ideal especially when you have a force coming at you which by the way is not unified but here's the thing ivar is on a journey and for the lack of character development that he had in the first two seasons i would argue that he was in you know now they're making up for that and he still has a lot of story to go um, Vitschek is the king of jumping ships, but there's still places to go with him. Um, arguably, you could lose Vitschek, Bjorn, and, and be fine. Uh, you really, if you're just going by the logic of what's going to happen tonight by like where we need to go, checking boxes, like I said, of external destinations, not character, the internal development, um, Uba and, and Ivar are all you need as far as the Sons of Ragnar. So, you know, uh, did Bjorn do enough as a character? Uh, meaning did they do enough with him as a character to get to us to get to a place in which we should be feel satisfied about his development and his journey and you know what we experience and in the perspective that we gained and, and throughout this journey you know that's up to you me personally I feel like uh, if they wouldn't have dropped the ball as I feel this is just me having my personal opinion I feel that uh, Byzantium and the Mediterranean you know that was that was a, that was a wash wasn't satisfying. I think that you have to look at him as a son and, um, you know, that he really added to Lagatha. He, he, uh, oftentimes characters find themselves, um, being, uh, really surrogates to others growth, meaning he enhances Ragnar. He enhances Lagatha, but himself is kind of a static character in a lot of ways. Uh, he had a lot of growth, um, before the other sons, uh, came along, but as soon as they came along, as we did not really get their childhood so much, we got a semblance of it, you know, with Uba and, and Ivar and so forth. But, you know, not, not anything like Bjorn's uh, um, journey gave us. Bjorn's journey gave the father and the mother their layers. Um, after that, he had his conquest. I felt like that fell a little bit flat. I think he is gone now. I think that it is his time to, to, to exit this story stage, stage left. It is, it is, is the way it's got to be because there's just not a lot to do from here. Um, and again, it's not because he needs to go to Sweden or they can't go to Sweden or he has to be keen at cat. No, it's just because now it's, 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 it's honing in on the characters we have left that have development. And those are Ivar who has been humanized, but I tend to believe that Ivar just cannot fail here in the sense of he cannot take whatever he decides he's going to want to take, which I'm leaning towards, he's going to want to have control over Igor. And why does he want that? Because of not, not this external force, but because of the internal, he is somebody that suffers, uh, you know, very, very direly from this want of love and needing of connection. And it, you know, also he is very compassionate for one, one, type of person and that is a child uh it's the only person that he does not you know act like a murderous vicious mad hound with uh you know even when he was that now he's kind of toned down because he's seen you know ivar times 10 with um eeyore with with uh oleg he's seen ivar times 10 so we have ivar in a situation in which he has you know it's not the conquest of norway that he wants it's the conquest of um it, it is the journey to this place where he is. A, it's not a journey externally for Ivar at this point. It's a journey, journey in my opinion. We, we now need to see what Ivar has learned from his experience and see what he does with it. His back is against the wall. Let's see how he acts. Let's see the true character come out from Ivar now. Let's see how he acts tonight. But I don't think that means reconciliation with Bjorn by any means. I think that means um, him finding a way to... Um, Yes, be powerful, but also be fulfilled and be a uh, as decent as a human being Ivar can be. He has a, his character arc is 
in its last act as well. Don't get me wrong, but there's still places to go internally and externally with him. Bjorn, sorry to say, but he's, um, he's at the end of the road here. Bjorn's focus on his personal life. He has in this threes company situation. Um, good for Bjorn, I guess, but you know, we can all kind of agree Bjorn's not the best guy. Um, his children have been highly, uh, featured this season and in uh, the last half of 5a so you know leaving behind all of the 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 red flags for if somebody's gonna go are, are there and again you know Bjorn's character was fantastic and it, it is a character that serves you know the father and the mother uh, just as much if not more than itself and sometimes you know characters uh, serve as more of a surrogate to the development of others and you know now that Legatha is gone you know it's just it's not it's not going to be a priority for this story. Uh, this is not a story about these particular Vikings um, that from history are the sagas. As I said, this is a story about, um, you know, brothers struggling with fame, um, people struggling with objectification and, uh, you know, wanting to better themselves and find a better way to live. But it's kind of got to the point of conquest has happened besides the Greenland thing. And now it's, Hey, we've gotten out. We've got our, settlement in East Anglia. Let's go check on that. But now we have to be happy with ourselves. You know, this is a, no longer a, a, um, a story of the underdog. This is a story of entitled princes and, you know, Bjorn is, he, he was the segue for that. So it's going to be very interesting. However, it, you spin it, but you know, I think we just kind of fall down this trap with Vikings a lot of saying like, okay, well, we got to have this happen. It's like, you know, Ol Olaf is, is the great grandson of, of uh, fine hair. Like that, like this, this is very clear and it's not because of incompetence. Um, I, I don't think that, you know, like Michael Hurst is like, Oh, I'm going to make sure to nail down the, the historical uh, accounts or I'm going to make sure to depict the Norse sagas, you know, uh, via this visual medium to a T. No, I, it, this is, you know, I, I don't think he schlubbed it up. I, th I have some issues with his storytelling and there's an excellent uh, bit of uh, character development that they left off screen uh, courtesy of a Vikings Aftermath crew. This is from Diane, one of the, um, I believe one of the moderators, I'm sorry, are one of the at least uh, founders. Uh, of that group there, I'll link them on Facebook, but this excellent uh, image right here of Bjorn speaking to Uba about how he should have been there for Vitschek because he he needed him when Bjorn was looking for glory. And I wish they wouldn't have cut that because that's the type of stuff, you know, that that is really great for for adding some complexity and some emotional depth. Um, and it is what it is. It's not always cut by hers. It's, there's a lot of, you know, factors in this, that which we, even myself, or I'm not privy to um, somebody, I mean, somebody that is obsessed with it and, you know, has insight into the process, but I have no, not on set. So it's, you know, it's, it's frustrating when you see stuff like that, but uh, Bjorn is a character in which, you know, I, I would say he, he did a great service by layering Legatha and Ragnar more than anything. So, um, you know, I'm excited for tonight, but I'm also a little bit worried that, you know, this, this series is going to continue on with this ruse for a little bit too long. And I, I, I only say that because, what Ivar wants isn't what he's going towards. It's what's with him, but he just doesn't want one person that's with him. He needs Olog to go away and then Igor and, you know, his try again X, um, at least the way he perceives her. I guess pretty lucky for him that he's the only person that can see, see her like that. But, you know, I, I believe that he, his happiness is, is there. It's just, it's just one husband uh, uh, too many right there. So I think that that's, that's the path that he'll go down and we'll see how he handles um, maybe having some sort of a normal family, I guess. So as always, you guys are the best. Uh, let's hope for a fantastic mid-season finale, and let's really hope for a, a, a step up in storytelling for the last half of the season and this series. I'm Justin Thomas. Thank you, guys. Make sure to subscribe. Check out my Patreon if you have not already. If you want to support creativity, I'm not a full-time content creator. Uh, if you'd like to see more consistent and higher quality videos, please consider just a $3 donation a month because it makes a huge difference to me. Thank you to all my Patreons that do support me. I will see you guys soon.